So I'm going to show you how to use a texture file within the MASH network in Maya. I made this little video as an example. And um, as you can see, there's a lot of little um, cubes that come together and they form a house shape. Uh, it's pretty simple and very fun to try. So I'll get going. Okay, so now that we have Maya open, we just create a little cube here and we're going to need to make a mash network. So um, we go to um, animation and up top you should have mash and if not, you may need to install it in the um, plugin manager, I think. But uh, I have it here, so I'm just gonna create mash network with the cube selected and it uh, creates a MASH network and it's linear here. So we're going to change some of the settings right off the bat. Um, and if you click the attribute editor and go to MASH distribute, you will see um, the number of points and the distribution type. We're going to change that to grid for now. And I'm also going to increase the number of points to maybe like, let me see what it looks like. If I change to 10 and 10 along the X and Z and maybe the distance to, it needs to be bigger. So 20 and 20 and then oh, there we go. We have a good distribution here. Um, for now. Okay, so we've got a MASH network or the beginning of one and what we need is an image file um, for this specific, uh, specific tutorial. So if I um, look at what I've already found here, I'm going to open up in my source images folder, I saved this. Um, this is a great image to use because it's very simple and it's black and white. And when you uh, use a texture file within the MASH network, you're going to want it to be black and white. And wherever there's white, that's where the, um, the little objects will be drawn to. So that's the shape they're going to form. So I found that if you just search for black and white clip art, um, there's a lot of great options like this. And you can... Um, you can reverse in Photoshop the colors. So if um, a lot of it was, uh, this originally was a black house with a white background and I just switched it so that it worked for me. And uh, once you have an image like this, you're ready to get started. So I go to this strength section on the MASH distribute attribute. And um, what you're going to need is just the scale so I take off position and rotation and um, the strength map is where we put our image texture file. So click on the checkered box there and then go to file and then I have a project file for this so it took me right to where I need to go. Um, this is going to be the house reverse. So um, as you can see it doesn't look right just yet. So I'm just going to go back to the mesh network and I um, need to change the map projection axis. So I'll try. Ah, I think Y is the correct one as you can see. Um, it's pretty good but to help us out we're going to need a few more uh, points. So I'm going to change this to 100. I was going to say 100. Let's try 50. Okay. Ooh, that's a ton. That's so many. And um, yeah, that filled it in a lot. Um, maybe we can play around with Y. If we put 10 there, it gives us some depth, which is cool. Um, and that's how I originally did it. So that looks okay. I'm going to maybe go with 15 and, um, the distance change that too. Let's see. Oh, maybe a little too, too dense. I'm going to change maybe to 30. This is where I just play around and figure out some numbers that look the best. And, um, 
as you can see, there's some uh, like extra cubes up here that shouldn't be there. Uh, if I go to the strength and then the map helper, oops, if I just create, that creates like this little map um, mesh that helps it. I've, I don't really know how it works, but it definitely helps organize the cubes better. And you can just hide that by control h -ing it in the um, outliner. So there you go. That is using the texture file, but we want to animate it. So yeah, we've got, um, we've got them organized in the way we want, but what if we wanted it to uh, come together like in the animation? I'm gonna change my animation settings to 150. And um, I'm gonna, since this is the final view of it of the um, animation I'm gonna start here and start keyframing at 50 so uh, back to that mash back to the attribute editor and we're going to <clears throat> keyframe the strength and then let's go to one Actually, I think I I did it closer to 100. So let's, okay, that's untrue. I did it closer to what? <laughs> one, zero. I have auto key on just so you, you know that whenever I make a change, it remembers it. So that automatically kind of creates the little squares and then fills out the image at the end um, by the time the strength hits one. So now to scatter them a bit, I add an, another node in MASH. Um, and I think this is where I started closer to 100. Let me see. Uh, to the MASH tab here, and then I added a random node and that randomizes everything so at 150 at the end i want it to be completely organized and not random so i'm moving everything to zero and keyframing everything because i'm not sure if it you'll you'll know it's keyframed if it becomes red um after that i'm gonna Hmm, let's go to 120 actually. And we'll make the randomization, let's just see what two looks like, two, two. Okay, it's a uh, randomized, but I wanted it to be more random than that. So five, 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 more random even. Um, 10, 10, 10. Oh, that's, that's random. <laughs> and then they all pop together. So they all are created and then move together. I actually want it to be even ran randomer. <laughs> 20, oh my goodness. There's so many. And they all come together to make the house. So that's pretty cool, I like it. I think maybe I may might make it less dense if I go back to the distribute tab. Um, it's hard because it's all preference, so it's not going to look exactly like my last animation just because my numbers are slightly different, but overall it's the same general idea. Um, it's cool. So that is is what that how that works, um, but there's one last thing. I also added a color node to give it um, just some cool color effect. So I am just gonna show you how this renders now uh, without color. So I just create a light, sky dome, hide it because I don't like to see it. <laughs> and then, okay, so it's very um, not, Pretty. and also I'm rendering the light itself. So I'm going to turn the light off in the camera. So I just doop and okay. 
there it is. Um, so let's get some color in there. I love to use color in MASH. So if you click on MASH and you go to the, the first tab and you select, where are you? There it is, add color node. It automatically turns white right away. So we're gonna pick a color. Um, I think I picked blue before. I can, blue is definitely my favorite color, so I'm always, always a fan of it. Um, hmm, that looks okay for now. What I love to do is amp up the random hue so you get kind of some variety in the color, but it stays within the family that you had chosen in the beginning. I like to change maybe the saturation a little and the value. Um, I'm going to keep that lowish, but also change it. And the random hue is fun because if you pump that up, you get all sorts of colors. Um, and I can change the shade of blue and you get, God, it's really just fun to play with. I, I can play with it all day. But um, we're going to stick with just that, I think, is good. And um, so that looks cool. And you can see it in the viewport like this when you scroll and scrub through. There's one last thing. Um, you'll notice that when you render the house, it doesn't um, show you the color in the render. So you only see it in the viewport. And there are a few uh, tricky steps that you need to take in order to um, override that. So first off, you're going to want to just select your repo mesh and go over to the um, repo mesh shape uh, tab in the attribute editor and scroll down to Arnold. Um, so it's all open here, but if you go down to Arnold and then you scroll down to export, you'll see export vertex colors is not selected. So just select that. Um, and also you want to go to the mash network uh, in the mash repo uh, tab. You want to scroll to the bottom and uh, expand output attributes and make sure that color per ver vertex is selected. Mine is already selected, but um, yours might not be, so you just want to make sure. Um, and then finally, we're going to need to assign a new material to the, um, the repo mesh. So if I right click, and then I'm going to assign a standard surface. And that will, um, that will be step one, but we still will not see the color come up when we render. So in order to see the color, we need to uh, go to the new standard surface that we've created. Um, under base and color, click the checkerboard. And you want to go to Arnold and then type in data like I did before, D-A-T-A. And uh, you'll see AI user data color. Select that. And in the attributes section here, we write color set. I don't know why, but, and I don't know if you need a capital S, but I always put that as a capital. Um, and this is the trick. So now when we render, we can see the color and, um, It shows in all of the renders at this point. So that is it. That's how we um, create a MASH network that uses a texture file to transform into whatever shape you like, and also how to um, assign a color node and render. The, uh, the color out. So I hope you guys uh, learned something and um, I hope you make some really cool stuff. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.